Welcome to episode 67 of Gintama. Last time we had the Dongo eating, and this time we have this new character who seems like it was a fan submission or something. So uh, let's get into it. We're going to watch and discuss. I've got the subtitles and timer on the screen if you want to follow along or you can pull up the episode on your own. Um, I looked at the Crunchyroll version of this episode, and they don't have the OP on there for some reason. The version that I'm watching has the OP at the start, so that's where we're starting, at the very beginning with the start of the OP. So so let's get into it in 3, 2, 1, play. Alright, so yeah, they ate a bunch of Dongo. And like I said, it, it just from what it seems from the little preview at the end of last time, that... um. We've got this character who was like a an Amanto created by a fan who sent a submission in for some contest. So we'll see what that's like. But while the OP is playing, let me say that if you enjoy these videos, subscribe to the channel. We got new Gintama episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays with other videos every day of the week. Check out the description down below. You got Twitter and Discord if you want to hang out there. And Patreon if you want to support the channel, get these videos early. Get polls and vlogs and all that stuff. Thank you. So, yeah, we'll see what this new character is like. I am recording this um, the same day as I recorded the previous episode, so I haven't put that episode up yet and heard anybody's response to what I said before about how it seems like this is a fan submission character. I'm assuming that is the case. That is what it seems like. All right, but let's, uh, what, regardless of the character, what will actually happen in the episode? What will the plot be? I have no idea. Maha Noriko? Oh, yeah, there's the old guy! So, yeah, he was in the ED. I was waiting for him to show back up in the show, and there he is. Fixed up the scooter. Thanks, dude. That's fair. Gun guy. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, well, just change the subject. There you go. If something happens again, I'll rely on you. And then he just leaves. That's actually badass. <laughs> he just has a fucking button to where if he, if he doesn't pay, he can just sabotage him. That's totally fair. Whoa, and there she is. Riding a scooter herself, and it's completely destroyed. As is hers. Is she like... Oh my god. If she doesn't have a bike, she'll die? Is that like a... <laughs> Her species just has to be constantly feeling the wind on a bike or she'll die? Or is she just insane? She looks like Haruko, maybe, from Fooly Cooly. Also is dressed like, maybe like the bride from Kill Bill or something? I don't know. That's what I'm seeing here. That's a little bizarre. Okay, the fabulous wind spirits. You have to feel the wind. I mean, what if there's... Uh, okay. I... Do you sleep? Yeah, <laughs> like a shark. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you just... Get on a vehicle that can go at all times, regardless of your... I... I don't know, this is interesting. Uh, this is bizarre. She just has to be feeling the wind or die. Like, what? The chance. Honestly, you, yeah, you should. Then you don't have to carry her anymore and she can be on her way. Take this one. 
What is her job, though? I guess we're going to find out, because he's going to hang out with her, I guess, for this episode. It's interesting for an Amanto design, like, by a fan, that her design is so basic. She just looks like a person. But I guess it won because of the idea. Because the idea is funny. Because she's a, hot, a cute girl, too, so... There you go. Extra bonus. And she wants to be a mail carrier. What an ambitious goal! Ah, gosh, she just dies if, if she stops. And doesn't want to run herself because it's a pain. Oh my god. She loves the wind! For a wind spirit, she's... <laughs> She sure is uh, careless and uh, kind of shitty at her job, maybe. Oh, God, it's a red light. We have to stop. <laughs> She's just dying. She's bleeding out. <laughs> what a what a ridiculous idea. I like it a lot. Just she has to she can't stop. She's just got to be on the move. I actually this is interesting because recently I was. inspired uh, by uh, with an idea similar-ish to this. What? <laughs> ah, I see Battle Royale. <laughs> but yeah, um, most- Whoa! <laughs> okay, I guess it's technically delivered. What a- what a- what a crazy person. Jump toys? Maybe I'll talk about the idea that I had in the discussion. It was like a horror movie, though, that I had an idea for. <laughs> oh my god! My toys! What a horrible ass mailman. Absolutely despicable. <laughs> oh wow. It's actually talking to the wife. What is it, their, like, anniversary or something? Wow. He's being very rough with her, but she actually seems like she's sorry and she wants to come back and reconcile. But then somebody's gonna get a package thrown into their head. Did he send a gift? But it got... No! You just... <laughs> That's so sad! Don't just breeze by that and then... <laughs> that... <laughs> he... Like, they're, they could potentially be repairing their marriage and their relationship. And they have a child together too, right? I think? Maybe? Um... And, like, and, <laughs> and he sends her a cake because he remembered their anniversary, but she's going to think that he demanded it to be thrown in her face, and now they're going to be at odds again. That's so sad. <laughs> oh, but she did leave in the first place, so if she came back, maybe she still wouldn't be satisfied and would just leave again, so maybe it's for the best, I don't know. And now we're talking about bomb threats. Oh, nice. It is, it is making some ticking. Some Yeah. No, not Lana. <laughs> Didn't we do this in, like, one of the very first episodes of Gintama? Wasn't it, like, Katsura's introduction or one of his first episodes? Where they delivered a bomb or something? I think that happened. Yes! No! <laughs> No! Become the wind. Run with the wind. What the god? Just destroying it even further! Nice. 
That's a nice addition. Nah, it's not as important. Yeah, no shit. I thought you were good at your job, man. Everybody's just incompetent at their job in this episode. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty standout. Mecha? Mecha mode? Holy shit. Whoa! It's the fucking coup de burst. I thought it was going to turn into a mech. But yeah, that's some good wind. Good for you. This is a fun episode. It's like Speed, the movie. You just gotta keep moving. You gotta keep moving or you'll die. <laughs> it's Kintama's version of Speed. When I think of it like that, that's hilarious. It's just, you're constantly on the move. Constantly keeping the action going. Now we're going up! Holy shit. Yeah, like, that's some uh, some cool additions that he gave your bike. Just toss it. And then it's just going to explode and, like, ruin the moment. Um, I don't know if you will. Well, maybe it should have. I don't know about that. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. And we're gonna come crashing down. It'll explode! We don't even have to worry about the bomb. The bike's gonna explode. Why would you make it so that it explodes? <laughs> and there they go. What a bizarre thing that happened here today. She's good. She's feeling the wind. Wow. Wow. What a fucking... I don't know how often we'll see this character. Because, like, I don't know how many different things you could do with her. But she's fun. And now we're doing something else. I could have gone for an entire episode about that. That was fun. But, okay. It was probably just one chapter of the manga. So, just pretty quick. Okay, Sachan. Well, shit. The ideal girlfriend has to be Minami-chan. I see. From Touch. Never read it. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I want to tie him up. And do so many things. This is a job for the cold-hearted. We must remain detached from our emotions. Big Edo Hospital. <laughs> this is just, this is big. That's the name of the hospital. It's a big hospital. So let's call it the Big Hospital. Yeah, she's distracted. Although if she wasn't distracted by Ginsan, she'd probably be distracted by uh, not being able to see, which happens all the time. Okay, do everything to the death. Go uh, go far in everything that you do. Go hard. Why? It's just a distraction. There you go. Easily distracted by anything. Ah! So this is directly after the last arc then. He uh, is in the hospital with Blackjack from his explosion. So uh, that's cool. We are continuing that a little bit. From one crazy girl's care into another. One girl who needs to be one with the wind and one who needs to fucking do this shit. 
Poor man, can't catch a damn break. So once again, we're just continuing with the theme of everybody being bad at their jobs. And also Gintoki being an unlucky man. Is that what it's called? Technical term? <laughs> okay, we'll see. Two or three cuts. Oh god, Hattori. Ah! The ass! No! His fucking hemorrhoids! <laughs> oh god. As soon as you... Oh, what is she gonna do to him? Oh! As soon as you see an ass, you just know it's him, so. He lost his toys, and now he got his giant syringe up his ass. This episode is just unfortunate for everybody. And poor Hasegawa. <laughs> that was so fucked. I don't know. Okay, so... Let's pull a Minami-chan. Be really nice and help take care of him. See if he falls for you. That's fine with him, he wants that to happen. What? Oh, I see. Solid pun. <laughs> don't, don't punch her. Although if you're bothering a, the hospital patient this much, I don't know. Maybe it's okay to get a little forceful. Why would you do that? Ah! Oh, this man and his butt! How many scene cuts have there been? Pretty good. What is happening? Why are you... No, if you have to punch, then punch at this point. Get this person out of the hospital. This is bad. Oh, oh at least you didn't put the other end in first. But still, um... You get... This... Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck, run away. You get to... It's on fire! Take it out! Oh my god, it is. We went from speed to misery. What a... <laughs> What a combination of stories to put in one episode. Keanu Reeves on a bus, and then Kathy Bates breaking your ankles. <laughs> uh, this episode is insane. I, this is like one of my favorite episodes, probably. <laughs> this is so stupid, I love it. <laughs> she got so upset. <laughs> No, don't come, please. Stay away. Hello? Yeah. Okay, if that's your focus, that's fine. But, uh, yeah. You should just quit that job if you're not gonna focus on it. Oh, shit. Are we going to get back on the job? Mm-hmm. 
You have to focus on the job. He was a little creepy when he showed up, so makes sense. You have to uh, focus on the job to save your love. <laughs> the diabetes. <laughs> I've given up. <laughs> Understandable. Like, I'd rather just eat fucking good food and die early. I'll just whatever. Not the balls! It's not going to happen. You're going to have them forever. Why is everything exploding in this episode? There's a bomb, there's a bike, his balls, something. Just in general, just his ass, I guess, as a whole. And I told you this would happen about the fucking the glasses. <laughs> I am? Whoa! I mean, you're both. You're an assassin sadomasochist. Shit! He's gonna take their organs. Sachan gets to save the day. Nice disguise. Whoa! Shit, just straight up stabbed the man. You lost track of all that? Two of those. What? What? Also, she's not wearing her glasses, so... Impressive. Oh my, this... Holy shit. Okay. Good work. That she doesn't know where the hell he is. But that was she did that without her glasses, too. Oh, it's Hattori. You can see the hair. And his ass is going to be right there. Kiss him. Kiss him on the ass. Go ahead. Build up. Get build up to it. Go ahead and just get it over with. <laughs> get you, Yep, there it is. You knew it was coming, but there it is. I figured he'd probably fart. <laughs> Why'd you Oh, he got tied up too. Yeah, okay. And uh Hachari, I imagine she just shoved her entire a uh, leg up his ass or something. I don't know. I, I just don't know. <laughs> that was... <laughs> I can't believe, like, both of those stories were so insane and energetic and fun. I can't believe they were both the same episode. Oh my god. Like, either one of those is pretty good, but both of them... Yeah, that was a very fun episode, so... Doesn't seem like there's too much time left there's probably nothing after the ed except the preview so let's see that what is it what do we got next time ghosts okay there's an elizabeth mask um okay we're doing something with ghosts a guy with his eye hanging out um okay well we'll see what happens there uh let's talk about this one all right, episode 67. This is probably, like, one of my favorite episodes. It was just really funny. Really fun all throughout. Two different stories that were both really enjoyable. One that I w was kind of disappointed that it wasn't longer. I kind of wanted it to be longer. I could have spent some more time with that new character, Noriko. And even though I was disappointed that we were switching to another story for the second half, that ended up being good too. So I was like, oh shit. 
I was just thinking about that story by the end, the one that we ended on, thinking that was really good. And then, oh yeah, that whole other thing happened that felt like it, like in, in terms of enjoyment, they both felt like they basically had enough enjoyment to be satisfying episodes on their own, but they were both in the same episode. So that's awesome. Uh, it's kind of rare to have multiple stories in the same episode that are both just really, really good. So. I did like the first one more, just for the concept. It's cool to see Gengai again, he was in the ED. I don't really know why, um, out of all the people you could put in the ED, maybe he'll have a bigger role, maybe it's just totally random, I don't know. But he was here, at least, he did come back, so there's at least a reason for him to, to be in it. So, cool to see him again, fixing the bike, and I love that whole exchange. Like, So the money, yeah, yeah, I'll come back to you again if I need anything. Great that he fucked with the bike and that he can just destroy it if need be if he doesn't pay and great accident introducing uh haruhara haruko so yeah because like that's clearly who she is um it's really cool to have a fan designed character it's cool when series will do something like that there was a contest to design an amanto and this person won i don't know if they got any kind of reward other than getting their design in the story but at least they got that that's neat um, but yeah, it looks like the design is just based off of Haruko from FLCL with uh, the bride from Kill Bill's outfit. So neat. I mean, she's on the scooter and everything. So it's like, I'm pretty sure that's where the design is based off of, which is interesting that that one, because that's such a simple design. She just looks like a girl. I imagine it won for the idea, just because this Amanto race who can who has to constantly be moving and feeling the wind in order to not die i assume that was the person's idea i don't think that was like the contest like that's the idea design an amanto to fit that criteria i think you could probably come up with your own idea too i imagine so and i imagine that's why that was chosen because that's a really fun idea so, yeah, I was talking during the reaction, this is actually similar to an idea that I had, so I'll get into that. I was thinking about the movie It Follows, because I really like that movie a lot, and in that movie, once this demon has latched onto you, it just follows you wherever you go. It will always be slowly walking towards you, until it eventually catches you, and I was just thinking about things similar to that, and I thought of an idea where, like, you have to constantly be moving for this thing, to not catch you. I just imagined a scenario out of a horror movie where you see like some shadowy figure off in the distance that you're walking towards or you, they're somewhere in the frame when you're walking in some direction and they're just standing perfectly still but then as soon as you stop to like tie your shoe or something you see them start walking towards the character and i was just thinking oh like oh shit i should make a fucking horror movie also that's too similar to it follows so i probably shouldn't do it but yeah it was just funny because i had that idea about a character who has to like constantly be in motion or or else die and then this happens in a much different context so yeah, and uh, it also reminded me of the movie Speed, where there's a bomb on a bus, and if the bus goes below 50 miles per hour or whatever, uh, the bomb explodes. And that's a really fun movie with Keanu Reeves, and it's just a really good at keeping the pacing up, because the whole movie is just a bus going, and it can't stop. So it just keeps the action and the tension going consist consistently, because... It's just, you gotta go. The whole movie is just about forward momentum and not stopping. So it's the same kind of thing here, not quite as much, but I was just thinking of that, like she's just gotta go. And that's a fun character. That's a fun concept. This whole episode is people being incompetent at their jobs and like really fucked up tragic things happening and Gintoki being really unlucky. And yeah, it was fun. Just the modifications to the bike. Like, oh yeah, the brakes are fucked up, but I put in this radio, and then he admits, I maybe should have had my priorities different, and then it, it goes up, and it's amazing, and we feel the wind. Also, uh, it will explode. <laughs> and it does. So all that shit was fun. This girl is really fun. Her goal of being a mail carrier, and not being sure if she can make it in this city, but now she has the confidence. And I don't know if she should, but you know, I guess good for her. I don't know if we'll ever see her again since she was this fan design character. Maybe it's totally a one-off. And I don't know how much you could really do with her, but I'd be down to see her again. That'd be fun. I don't know if there will be other fan design characters, but like I said, when the first segment ended, I was kind of disappointed that it wouldn't go for the entire episode because I wanted to see more because I was having fun. Maybe it would have overstayed its welcome. 
and either way i liked the second segment too but yeah just the male <laughs> crushing poor hattori's toys he's got so many problems with his ass later in this episode but also you crushed his toys Hasegawa, that was so fucked up. <laughs> Last time you had the starving family, the Gintoki, uh, possibly murdered by giving them one thing of Dongo and, and that's it. <laughs> now, it's like a really sweet seed and you know it's going to be interrupted by a mail delivery going wrong somehow. I didn't know how exactly, but I love the way that it happened. But she's calling him and kind of seems like she's regretting things or wanting to make amends with him. And he's really not having it. He's, I mean, understandably because of what how she walked out on him. But she's actually kind of regretful and thinking about how it's their anniversary and that he wouldn't remember. But he actually did. And he does still care. And he did remember their anniversary. He sent her a cake. But because of the fucked up mail delivery, you just get this <laughs> cake shoved in her face. So it sounds like it's sarcastic. Like, oh, happy anniversary. You know, it sounds like it's, it's a fucking insult. And that's so fucked! Maybe, again, like, maybe it worked out for the better. Maybe it wouldn't have worked out if she came back. She left in the first place, so maybe she'd just leave again. Maybe it's best that they're apart, but it's just sad, like, the possibility that they could have come back together, because I think they had a kid. I think I remember that right. I could be wrong, but... Coming back together, maybe it's what they both want, and then it was totally ruined for that! Oh my god. That was just horrible that that happened and then we just move on poor Hasegawa and he has no idea he has no idea what the delivery was like holy shit that was great that was one of the funniest moments in the entire show for me so far and yeah just the idea of this Amanto race that's what I really like to see just uh, an Amanto race that's just weird <laughs> they just they have to keep moving and feel the wind or they'll die just weird shit like that you can make it anything you want. Uh, they don't even have to have cool designs, obviously. Like, I like some really interesting design to Monto, too, but I also like the ideas behind their genetics and how they operate, and you have, you have cool shit like that. Any idea that you can come up with, I like to see that from various weird alien races. I, I'd like to see more of that, aliens who just work in weird ways. And we get into the second segment, which ended up being really fun too, with Sachan trying to decide love or the job, being told that her feelings are interfering with the job. People have to close themselves off emotionally to stay focused on their work in this line of business. And she's like, no, no, that's not the case at all. And trying to decide what to do, what she should focus on. <laughs> and just deciding, like, oh, you know, maybe my love for Kentucky, that's, that's all I need. I can just focus on love. And then by the end, deciding that she needed to focus on her job in order to save him. And, you know, it's, it's all about finding that balance. Whichever you decide, it's, it's your decision. Either one is fine. Whichever one you think is, is right for you. If your job is what makes you feel satisfied. If giving that up for love is what makes you feel satisfied. And then do whatever you feel is, is right for you. If you want to try to find a balance between the two, then that's great. Best of both worlds. Just figure it out. You don't have to completely sacrifice one thing for the other, but you know, think it through. Be a little rational about it. I don't know if she's entirely capable of that. Half the time she can't even see what's going on. She's just losing her shit all the time. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty basic in terms of the jokes, really. Because, like, the first one was interesting because you had this new character and this new idea about her having to be on the move all the time. And this one, a lot of it is... Sachan loves Gintoki. Sachan is a sadomasochist. Hattori has a fucked up rear, but it was still funny regardless. The poor fucking man, as soon as you see like somebody, they're sticking out their butt, it's like, oh, he's here. It's really cool that it was continuing the story of Gintoki and the explosion that he's injured <laughs> in the hospital with the blackjack guy. And oh, his hair will be back in two to three scene cuts. And seeing Hattori again after his toys were destroyed, and now he's just having a horrible day too, getting worse and worse shit shoved right up his ass. And it's like, goddamn, it's it's horrible and brutal and funny. And uh, just like before, where you know the Hasegawa punchline is coming, here, the punchline at the end was really obvious, like down to the very last detail. Like, okay, it's Hattori, it's his ass. She's going to be hugging his ass. He's probably going to fart in her face. But there's just so much build up to it, and you know it's going to happen. And it was still funny when it happened, because her face is just right in his ass, of course. She probably, I don't know what she shoved up there, everything probably, and <laughs> yeah, and the fact that she came in there and was fucking totally badass, even without her glasses and really efficient and destroyed these fucking guys, 
and saved the day was really cool, but also fucked up entirely because Gintoki got tied up too and she had no idea what was happening. Like, she's trying to be helpful, trying to get him to like her and whatnot, but it got to the point where it's like, yes, if, if you must punch her, if you must use violence, whatever it takes to get this woman out of a hospital, this is clearly a, a threat to the patient's well-being, him and everyone around him. She's got him tied up. Candles are in people's asses. This is bad. You need to get her out of here. Everybody seeing Gintoki and Hattori with the candle in the ass situation was funny. Very obvious, but still funny. And Kagura running off like that. Telling them that like, oh, you know, your balls are going to explode. Something will explode <laughs> to get them to uh, to trick them into letting them almost take their organs. And uh, Sachan looked good in the nurse's outfit. You know, if you do want to change your line of work at some point, prioritize different things. Maybe have a better work-life balance if you consider being a nurse. And well, you know, you'd be terrible at it, and I don't advise it. But if you just want to look good in the outfit, well, you did. So yeah, honestly, probably one of my favorite episodes, just from a pure humor and enjoyment standpoint. Like, it ended and I was just really happy and really smiley. Like, damn, that was just a really fun time. And they fit both of those stories into one episode, and they were great. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts if you like this one as much as I do, or how you feel about it, how you feel about the two different stories. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel. Check out the stuff down in the description below. Really appreciate the support, and I will see you all next time.